Welcome back GED students. Today we're doing a math lesson. And because math is so incredibly hated and feared by so many students, I've decided to try to incorporate some lessons where we look at math used in real life. I think many of you struggle with conceptualizing math. That is, you can't really picture how to use it in real life. And that makes it harder for you because you don't have a mental picture of how and why this is actually useful. So in this lesson, we're gonna look at a very true story from actually just recently of how I used math. And this is how I used math to build onto my garden. So what math will we use in this lesson? We're actually gonna use quite a bit of math. We're gonna do some addition, some short and long multiplication, bit of short division, convert some units, do a little work with fractions, perimeter, and also volume. Sounds like a lot, but actually it's gonna be pretty easy, you'll see. So here's the background to the story. I absolutely love to garden, seriously. It is my most passionate hobby. And in fact, if you were to visit my house right now, there are 77 plants sitting in my dining room waiting to be planted. I have to wait a few more weeks until there's no danger of frost and then they can go in the ground. But there are 77 of them. Oh, you think I'm exaggerating? Yeah. Um, might be a little bit hard to count them all in this picture, but trust me, there's 77 of them. And the reason there's 77 is because I actually threw a few out since they weren't thriving. So yeah, I'm a little bit plant crazy. Well, clearly I need some new garden beds because I don't have space to plant all those. So I decided to build three new raised beds this year. But since materials can get kind of expensive, I needed to be as efficient as possible with my materials. And that meant a lot of math. And then more math. So let's follow my mathematical process as I designed and built my beds. Now, if you have some scratch paper and something to write with, that would be great to get out right now because then you can do these math problems on your own along with the video and get some good practice. So here was my goal. And in fact, in the picture, you can see the outcome. I did get my three new beds. Those three wooden beds there, those are the newbies. I wanted to build three new beds that would give me all the planting space I needed while also being easy to access for weeding and harvesting. I needed enough depth for really good soil. So I needed these beds to be eight feet long I wanted four feet wide, and I was looking for one foot deep. Now, here's the first instance where math entered the picture. I needed to choose the material to build the beds. Now, there's two options that I chose between. I could build my new raised beds out of either concrete blocks or pressure-treated lumber. Concrete blocks are a great option. As you probably saw in the picture, I built two concrete block beds last year. Concrete blocks are 16 inches long, eight inches wide, and eight inches deep. So they're a good size, and they sell for $2.28 a piece. At least they did at the time of this lesson. Now pressure treated lumber would be my other option. And specifically, I was looking at eight foot long two by sixes. So six inches wide, two inches deep, you could say. And those at the time of this lesson sell for $7.18 a piece. Now on the surface, the concrete blocks are cheaper, but obviously I need to figure out how much it's going to cost to build an entire bed out of them. Are the concrete blocks actually going to remain cheaper than the wood? So here's our first question. Which material would actually be the least expensive? Remember, what we want is to build a bed. We're going to look at the price per just one bed, even though eventually we want to build three. So just looking at the cost of building one bed, eight feet long, four feet wide, one foot deep. So let's do the math. If I build one raised bed 
and I want it to be eight feet long, four feet wide, one foot deep. Hey, you know what? While we're getting started, I need to use one common unit for all this math. So to start, I'm gonna to need to convert everything to inches because otherwise I'm gonna be bouncing between inches and feet. That's gonna to get to be a bit of a pain in the butt. So let's convert to start out. Right, so eight feet long, multiply that by 12 inches, that gives me 96 inches. So let's change that. All right, 96 inches long, four feet wide. Let's convert that four feet. Four times 12, 48 inches wide. And that one foot deep, one times 12, 12 inches. All right. So we're gonna be doing our math in inches for the time being so that we have one common unit. So 96 inches long, 48 inches wide, at least 12 inches deep. Let's look at blocks first. All right, concrete blocks are 16 inches long. So how many blocks do I need for the long sides of my rectangular bed? Well, we're going to need to do a little bit of division here. Now I need 96 inches. So we're going to say 96 divided by 16 and we come up with six. So we know that it'll take six concrete blocks per side to get the length on the long sides. All right, how many blocks do I need for the short sides? Here again, just a simple division problem. The short sides are gonna be 48 inches wide. We know that the blocks are 16. So 48 divided by 16, and we're gonna come up with three. So now I know for the short sides, I only need three blocks. Now, how many layers will I need to get the depth that I'm looking for? All right, I want these to be 12 inches deep and concrete blocks are eight inches. So 12 divided by eight, that comes out to 1.5. Well, there's one slight problem, and that is cutting a concrete block in half is a ginormous pain in the butt. So we're just gonna round this up to two and do two layers. All right, so if I use concrete blocks, I will need six blocks per long side, I will need three blocks per short side, and I will need two layers to get the correct depth. So how many blocks total is that? Do the math. Six times two, 12. Three times two, six. six. 12 plus six equals 18. So all total, 18 blocks per layer. But I need two layers. So 18 times two and that's going to be 36. So I would actually need 36 blocks per bed. 18 blocks per layer, two layers for a total of 36. Now there's one more step because I need to know how much money this will cost me if I use the concrete blocks. So I need 36 blocks per bed Concrete blocks cost $2.28 a piece. So now we have to do a little bit of long multiplication. Now, yes, we could do this very easily on a calculator, but let's write this out so that we can practice how this problem actually works. So 228 times 36. Now remember, you start with the farthest number to the right when you're multiplying a multiple digit number by a multiple digit number. So we're gonna start by multiplying 228 by that six. So we get eight 
48. 6 times 8 is 48. You've got to carry that 4. Now 6 times 2 is going to be 12. But remember, we had to carry that 4. So we've got to add that. So that comes to 16. Carry our 1. 6 times 2, 12 again. But don't forget that we carried a 1, so 13. Carry that 1, put it down here. Now, maybe you don't need to actually write on top all the numbers that you're carrying if you're decent at math. But if you're coming back to math after a long time of not doing it, it is helpful to write everything down while you're getting the basics back. Now, for multiplying by that 3, do a little arrow so that you remember not to put anything in that column. That's the key to doing long multiplication is to keep your columns neat and tidy. So you want to put your first number directly under that 6. 3 times 8 is going to be 24. So there's our 4. We're going to carry our 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus we carry to 2, so we add it, we get 8. And then we do 3 times 2 again, which is going to be 6. All right? Now all we have to do is we add these two rows of numbers together. So the 8 just has an arrow under it, which means 0. So 8 plus 0, 8. 6 plus 4 is going to be 10, so there's our 0, we carry the 1. 3 plus 8 plus the 1 that we carried is going to give us 12. Carry that other one. 1 plus 6 plus the 1 that we carried is going to be 8. Now, obviously our correct answer cannot be $8,208 because that would be ridiculously expensive. Remember, we had a decimal in our first number that we were multiplying, our 228. So we have to put the decimal in our answer. Now this is really easy because all you have to do is look up at your top number. How many places over is the decimal point? Is it after the 8? Nope. Is it after that first 2? Nope. It's after that second 2 when you're coming at it working from the right to the left. So two places, so the decimal place is going to go between the two and the zero. So $82.08 would be the total cost of one bed doing concrete blocks. Let's look at lumber. If I build one raised bed out of eight foot two by six lumber, I want this raised bed, remember, to be 96 inches long, 48 inches wide, 12 inches deep. Each of these boards is 96 inches long because they're 8 feet. 8 times 12, 96. So how many boards do I need for the long sides? Well, this one's pretty easy. I need 96. I divide it by 96 and I get 1. You probably could have just done that in your head. So one board for the long sides. How many boards do I need for the short sides? Now you could probably just eyeball this and come up with an answer, but let's write it out as a math problem anyways. 48 divided by 96, it would be 0.5, or in other words, half a board. So I only need half a board for the short sides because the board is 96 inches long and I only need 48 inches. So, how many layers will I need to get the length that I want? Each board is six inches wide, remember. So, I'm looking for 12 inches deep. 12 divided by six, two. So just like with the concrete blocks, if I do it with lumber, I need two layers to get the right depth. So if I use lumber, I will need one board for each of the long sides, only half a board for each short side, 
and I will need two layers to get the correct depth. So how many boards total is that? Let's do the math. There's my bed designed with boards. One times two, two. Half times two, one. Two plus one, three. So three boards per layer. And because I'm doing two layers, it would be six boards total. Now one more step. Remember, I need to know how much money this is gonna cost me if I use this pressure treated lumber. I need six boards per bed. Each board will cost me $7.18. So, seven, seven, eighteen times six. All right, six times eight gets me 48. So I write down my eight, I carry my four. Six times one is six, plus the four that I carried gives me 10. So I write down the zero, I carry the one. Six times seven, 42 plus that one that I carried. So three, carry the four, pull it down. Four, three, oh, eight. How many decimal places do I put my decimal in at? One, two, so right there, $43.08. So getting back to that original question, which material should I use? As we know, I can build it out of concrete blocks or pressure treated lumber. The concrete blocks are $2.28 a piece. The total I would need cost me $82.04. The pressure treated lumber is $7.18 a piece, but the total I would need would cost me $43.08. So the pressure treated lumber is actually the better deal, even though it starts out more expensive. So my next question, what's the perimeter of each garden bed, now that we've settled on what I'm gonna build them out of. Well, perimeter is really easy to figure out, especially when it's a rectangle. So let's do the math real quick. So I know the length of my long side and my short side on my rectangle. The formula for perimeter of a rectangle is length times two plus width times two. You could also write that as two L plus two W. So in other words, the perimeter is gonna be eight times two plus four times two. And in the order of operations, we're gonna do the multiplication within those brackets first and then add it. So the eight times two is gonna be 16. The four times two is eight. So 16 plus eight, and that's gonna leave us with 24. So the perimeter of my bed is 24 feet. Now you can also just add the sides if you're looking for perimeter, but it's easier and a little bit quicker if you know the formula. So again, perimeter for a rectangle, length times two plus width times two. A common mistake is that students will mix up perimeter with area. And so they'll look at perimeter and try to say, eight times four, which would get you 32, but that is the area, that's not the perimeter. The perimeter is the distance around, the area is the total square feet within. All right, so we've built a bed. Here's my brand new wooden bed, I'm super excited. One down, two to go. Now, I also have to fill those beds, remember. So here's where some more math came in. Because how much soil do I need to fill this new bed? Now again, we're gonna look at it one bed at a time because that's a little bit easier. And then at the end, we'll figure out how much I would need for three. So how much soil do I need? To figure this out, I will need to know the volume of one raised bed. To calculate volume, I'm gonna to need to multiply the length times the width times the depth or times height. Height and depth mean the same thing here. 
So volume of a rectangular bed. Here are my dimensions, eight feet long, four feet wide, one foot deep, or you could also say one foot high. And the formula for finding the volume of a rectangular prism, which is what I have here, is volume equals length times width times height. So in other words, the volume would be eight times four times one. Eight times four is 32. Multiply that by one, still gonna be 32. So my volume is 32 cubic feet, which I could also write as 32 feet and put that little three up in the corner, which means cubed anytime you see that. All right, so 32 cubic feet in volume. Well, it gets a little bit more complicated though, because I'm not just gonna go out and buy 32 cubic feet of dirt. I am a serious gardener and I like to spoil my plants a little bit. To fill each bed, I need 32 cubic feet of soil or of planting material, but I like to use a different recipe instead of just plain dirt. So here's my recipe that creates soil that's excellent for my plants. I like to do 1 8 topsoil with half compost and 3 8 soil conditioner, which is things like peat moss, which keep my plants nice and moist and give more space and aeration for the roots. So how many cubic feet of each item do I need? Let's picture the bed as a grid, 32 cubic feet of soil material, one eighth of it has to be topsoil, a half of it has to be compost, three eighths of it needs to be soil conditioner. Well, let's make this a little bit easier on ourselves. First, let's convert these fractions so they all have the same denominator. In other words, the same bottom number. Those are gonna be way easier to work with, right? So here's our fractions again, 1 8th, 1 half, 3 8 And we're gonna be filling a 32 cubic foot space. So why don't we make the denominator 32 on our fractions and then it'll be really simple. All right, so to turn 1 8th into blank over 32, what do we need to multiply both numbers by? 8 goes into 32 four times, so we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator each by 4, which is going to give us 4 over 32. See how I did that? 1 8 is equal to 4 32nds. All right. Now, one half, we want to turn that into something over 32. So how many times does 2 go into 32? 32 divided by 2 would be 16, right? So we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator each by 16. And that's going to give us 16 over 32. All right, last fraction. 3 eighths, and we already know from working with 1 eighth that 8 goes into 32 four times. So 4 is the number that we want to multiply our numerator and our denominator by. And so that's going to give us 12 over 32. So now we have three fractions where the denominators match for all three. It's going to be a lot easier to figure out our answer here. So here is that bed again, and we've drawn it up like a grid. So each of these squares is one foot by one foot by one foot. In other words, each square that you see, we're gonna envision is one cubic foot. Four over 32, if we were to color it in on this grid, would color in four squares, and we're envisioning them as cubes because we're using our imagination here. So that's four cubic feet of topsoil is four over 32. 16, if we colored in 16 of these squares, we would get 16 cubic feet of compost. And then 12 over 32, we color in those 12 squares, 12 cubic feet of soil conditioner. All right, we're almost done. Final step. 
Remember, I wanted three new garden beds and we figured out the materials I need for one. So let's take what we know about one bed and figure out what I would need to do three new beds. The totals that we calculated for one bed. I need six boards. I need four cubic feet of topsoil. I need 16 cubic feet of compost and I need 12 cubic feet of soil conditioner. All we have to do is multiply each amount by three. So if I multiply my six boards by three, I get 18. If I multiply my topsoil, four cubic feet multiplied by three is going to get me 12 cubic feet. My compost, 16 times 3 is going to get me 48, and my soil conditioner, 12 times 3, is going to get me 36. So my totals for three brand new garden beds are going to be 18 boards, 12 cubic feet of topsoil, 48 cubic feet of compost, 36 cubic feet of soil conditioner. And there it all is, awaiting use. My back hurts just looking at it. And that's the story of how math created my brand new garden.